Good afternoon, Quadcopter 101 here with the new JXD528. And before we get started, let me get my shout outs out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Ray Lugo. Ray was the first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus wins this shout out. So, congratulations, Ray. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I have a special drone for you today, something really neat. This is the JXD528 Future. What is so special about the JXD528 Future? Well, this is the cheapest GPS drone, and it's a GLONASS GPS drone too, not just GPS, GPS GLONASS, which means a rapid GPS lock-on, but it's the cheapest GPS drone with follow me capability, with circle me capability, or with waypoints capability. In actuality, it's got all three of those uh, capabilities through its uh, uh, GPS app, uh, the JXD GPS app. Now let's take a closer look at the drone, see what its features are on it. We have a 720p HD camera on the front here. That records directly to a micro SD card slot. Now you can see I don't have a controller. You can guess that this is controlled via your phone and indeed it's controlled. I'm going to use my um, the Echo LETV X520 <laughs> phone with this. And the reason I'm using my the Echo is this is also a 5G Wi-Fi. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi drone, which means you need an 802.11 AC phone, capable phone to be able to use this. Now, not all phones have 802.11 AC. Before you consider purchasing this, listen to me, before you consider purchasing this, make sure that your phone is indeed 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capable. That's 802.11 AC, some people call that 5G Wi-Fi. Uh, don't get this if your phone is not capable because you will not be able to control or fly this drone. Okay? With that being said, what else can we talk about this drone? Uh, the battery on it is a 750 milliampere hour 2S LiPo battery. Uh, it is a proprietary battery as you can see here with a proprietary plug to power the quadcopter. Although its charging port is a simple balance 2S balance charging plug, so you know, port uh, so you can, if you have an extension cable, charge this using uh, a balance charger. That doesn't need a uh, main lead to it, that is. Um, what else do we got? We notice here's our GPS is toward the back here, right about here it looks like. And the bottom of the GPS is covered with foil, properly covered with foil. That's good. So let's put this proprietary battery back in the slot, close it up. And finally, we have an on-off switch here. And I did, I'm making sure, did I mention that this has a micro SD card? Yes, I, I think I did, but let's say it one more time. Why does it have a micro SD card slot? Well, you can record directly to a micro SD uh, card, memory card, instead of recording to your phone. What that does is eliminate any Wi-Fi lag or frame dropping that you normally see off of uh, drones that record to the phone only. So that's the main reason you want to have a micro SD card slot. So let's fire this up. We'll fire up the GX, or JXD GPS app and see how it performs. We're going to, today we're going to try to demonstrate its follow me capability, its circle me capability, if we have time, waypoint capability. I don't think I'm going to have time enough to demonstrate range. I can do that in a, in a follow on flight though. So let's fire this up. And to do such, you turn on the drone by pressing this on off switch and holding it down for five seconds until the back lights start blinking green. And then we can open up the app after we connect to the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with our phone. Okay, this is the JXD GPS app. Now, the first time you connect this to your drone, it may ask you to update the firmware on the drone. And to do such, it'll tell you to turn off the drone on its on-off switch. It'll check the drone, see if it has the latest firmware. If it does not, it'll tell you to turn off the drone. And then when you turn it back on, it will update the, or turn the on-off switch back on, it will update the firmware in the drone. I recommend doing that at home while you're connected to home Wi-Fi. Okay, but since we are, I have already updated its firmware, right now we need to do a compass calibration. And you need to do this with all GPS drones. Keep that in mind, folks. This is not just this one. Uh, but the first time you fly it, especially the first time you fly it. But what we're going to do is just rotate the drone like this horizontally until the app tells us to switch to vertical rotations. And now vertical rotations, like so, until the app says... We're done. Still rotating, still rotating. Okay, and then we're done with that calibration. Now we gotta calibrate the virtual joysticks on our phone. And to do such, it tells you to move 
put your thumbs on the on the uh, controller and move both thumbs down and inward like so and also it sometimes it tells you to rotate there we go so virtual joysticks are set and first off let's start our video video camera turning it on and we're going to take to the air by we have first checking we have 13 satellites we've got sufficient satellites and in the lower left corner notice that takeoff button it says h with an upward arrow confirm takeoff and the first thing we do is check for stability always do this with all gps quadcopters make sure that they're not wandering in a circle uh, that's called uh, toilet bowl effect also let me get in the camera here and say how you like my shirt today folks nice one today you'll be able to see me on the ground definitely with this one <laughs> okay let's try the follow me let me go up a little bit higher and step backward a bit I always like to give a little room and then we'll turn on the follow me by pressing that button in the upper or just below the Google and hitting follow now this is going to be following the GPS on my phone okay that's how it knows where I'm at and let's see if it's following me now this is one of those few that can do it at low level <laughs> low altitude level follow me I like that but can we go up a little higher and will it still follow me will it still follow me I don't know is it yeah, yeah, it's apparently following me. <laughs> so, this is following me, this drone. What if I go a little bit faster? This old man runs a bit. <laughs> it's still following me. So, that's pretty darn cool in itself that it can do such. Again, one of the cheapest drones that has this capability. Okay, to come out of this, I'm going to push forward and plop the drone right over my head for the next one. We're going to do circle me with a drone over my head. Pressing uh, surround. And notice that it goes out and then it's... What you need to do is plop the drone directly over what you want to circle. And then it'll go outward and start to circle. Now you can adjust the radius of the circle. In the upper right hand corner, see the uh, settings icon that looks like a gear? You can increase the radius. And let's do such. Let me stop this by taking control of the drone, putting it, or we'll go into the settings, and we want to increase the, uh, not the speed setting, we're going to increase the radius to 10 meters. Okay, and that should do it. And I think I need to press up here. Let's get back overhead again, right about here. And then let's press that circle me again. Surround. So it goes out to about 10 meters now, and then it'll start the circle. So pretty dang cool that a drone at this price range is capable of doing this, okay? Uh, normally you'd have to spend over $100 to get that. Okay, I don't know what it's doing now, but it seems to be have adjusted its rotation point to over there now. <laughs> so we're gonna call it quits there on that. Okay, do we got time to demonstrate waypoints? Let's go up a bit. I want to give it a little more. Actually, before we do that, let's go up to about there and demonstrate its camera. And we're going to rotate from up there. Rotating. Yaw. Give it some yaw. Showing the camera. We'll do 180 degree rotate. And then we'll do waypoints. Okay, with it up there, let's press the uh, special features button again, hitting waypoints, hitting draw, and drawing a circle around us, and then hitting start. And there, it should start on its waypoint, magical mystery tour of waypoint journey. Now, it's flying into the sun first, of course, that's the first waypoint. Second, now this thing will return to home on low battery. Uh, when, once the battery gets too low, it will automatically come back home and land itself from the takeoff point. And we're going to probably do that. Uh, I should have set in the settings the delay time at each one of these waypoints less than zero. <laughs> but that's a lot of 
delay time for these. I'm going to cancel this before it goes too far. Well, let's go. Let us see you go to number two. Yeah, let's let's call her home, okay? Before it does all these waypoints, because they're this is going to take a long time. So let's do a return to home. Telling it to come back. I want to see its return home capability. I don't want to go into each one of those 12 waypoints because that'll take all day for it to do. I want it to come back and demonstrate its return to home capability. And we'll do that now. Um, I got its return to home altitude set pretty high, but you can go into the settings again and readjust this. You don't need to go this high, but uh, it's doing such to um, lower the chance of uh, hitting an obstruction on the way back on a, if it does a return to home. Okay, and it also is doing a return to home on low voltage now, too. Again, this comes back automatically on low voltage and lands itself. So that's the end of our flight. We're out of battery power. And accuracy of the return to home appears to be about two meters. So, again, not too bad, not too bad. Let me go back to the camera setting and turn off the camera. We got about close to six minutes of flight time there, apparently. But uh, for the price, again, keep in mind this thing is darn cheap. Uh, I'll include a link down below so you can check what the current price is. But for the price, this is not too bad, okay? Uh, especially with the capabilities that you get with this. So, hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out again with the JXT528 Future. See ya. Okay, we are ready to fly. And before we take off, we check how many satellites we got. And right now, I got 12 satellites. Keep in mind, this uses GPS and GLONASS. We can get up to 20 satellites. I've had up to 20 on this in a recent flight. But what we're going to do now is turn on the video camera. It's recording. And then we're going to tell this to take off by pressing the takeoff button in the lower left corner and hitting OK. Okay, I got quite of a bit of a wind today here, but first we're going to see how well this holds its position in that wind. Drifting back a little bit, but not too bad. I'm going to get in front of the camera here and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? Sorry, <laughs> I'm not wearing any tie-dye today, but let's go up a bit higher. It's fighting that wind. But what we're going to do first, before demonstrating follow me and circle me, is we're going to fly it around with the sticks. So pushing forward using the virtual joysticks and also going up above the altitude of the lights here because I don't want to hit those lights. So we're going to go up a bit higher and go out bind. And plop it right about there and let go of the sticks. And then I'm going to do a rotate up there showing the camera. Again, we got quite a bit of wind here today. I'm flying in the afternoon. <laughs> But for those of you out there, not everybody have, has windless days, so we're demonstrating how well this works on a windy day. And it does work. <laughs> okay, let's go forward now. Pushing forward. And we'll go outbound a bit. And above the trees. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit farther forward. And from over there, we're going to do a return to home. See how well it returns to home. Going up on, going up on further. I want to see what type of range we can get here, too. If I can make it over to the skate park, I'm going over that in the direction of the skate park. I still got FPV, by the way, at a range of uh, over 100 meters, 112 meters. Still have FPV. 135 meters. Flying out bond. 175 meters. That's pretty dang good. Can I go any further? I'm trying. 186 meters. Almost at the skate park. I'm going to stop at 200 meters. Okay, right there I'm stopping. Let's do a return to home from that position here because it started to get choppy. Return to home. And let's see if it comes back and how close it lands to its takeoff point. So it's on its way back. It should be on its way back. 197 meters. Still at 90, 197. Tell it to come home again. 
device disconnected. Okay, if that's the case, it should be coming home. It lost signal, it should be coming home on its own. It was over by the skate park. Where are you? I better check here. I'm picking up the signal. I'm trying to connect to it again. It's weak. Connected. Let's see if I can get in, regain the app. Return to home. I got connection. Return to home. Okay. Still over here. I'm telling it to return to home, it's not doing such. That time I told it to return to home. Okay, now it's returning to home. Um, I'm looking for it up in the sky, <laughs> seeing it return to home, but, oh, there it is. It drifted over there somehow, but it's going back home. Eventually it would have returned to home on low battery, so, that's odd that it took so long to return to home. Ah, low voltage. That's why. <laughs> See? It returns to home on low voltage. So, first test. Now, I lost contact with that drone. It sh in my opinion, it should have returned to home automatically when I lost contact. But it didn't. Okay? Keep in mind, I, I took it out to 200 meters. And somehow it drifted over to here, over over to that area there, when I had sent it originally over there. So I, I'm not sure what happened there. But let's go back, find out where that drone landed, and how close it was to its takeoff point. Okay, I see it. It looks like it's about three meters away from takeoff. Landed over here, and I didn't get a chance to yet to demonstrate. Uh, follow me. I'll do that in a follow-on uh, video here. Uh, but uh, first off, <laughs> today's flight was just demonstrating the camera, demonstrating the range. I took it out to about 200 meters. It made it out to about 200 meters. Then I lost contact, and you would have expected the drone to return to home on its own. Now, it would, it did return to home, I believe, on the low voltage. It does do that. But uh, return to home and lost contact, it didn't do. So keep that in mind if you're flying and you lose control. It's probably just going to stay hovering in the air until it loses, gets down to low voltage. Then it'll come home on its own. Uh, in follow-on flights, I'm going to demonstrate uh, follow me uh, and circle me capability along with waypoints. But this is just the first demonstration uh, demonstrating its... Um, uh, range capability and his camera. So, hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out.